Good morning and welcome to this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. Two very exciting things to talk about on this week's show. A little bit later in the program, we're going to talk about something called Project Prom. It is an annual event. It is near and dear to my heart. And I am excited to tell you that Project Prom will be starting this coming weekend. So we'll tell you if you're interested looking for a prom dress and you don't want to, can't spend a fortune on it, we'll tell you how you can take advantage of it. But we begin this morning with a subject about leadership. I think the other thing that excites me about this show is when we talk about something when it's just an idea, and then we come back and visit it when it's actually happening and working, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to refresh your memory about the Advanced Leadership Initiative. I have three guests that are going to give their perspective on this. Marsha Jones is one of the executive committee members. Jerry McCleary is the co-chair of the initiative. And Robert Young is the managing director. Welcome to you all. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having us. So, Marsha, let me start with you because I said it's always exciting. I mean, when we first started talking about this, it was a vision. It was an idea. And now it's come full circle and it's actually come into fruition. It is. And we're really very excited about it because it has been... Uh, a work of love, if you would, mm -hmm. uh, of collaboration in the community, and one where we believe that we have uh, put together a number of different constituents, both for-profit, not-for-profit, as well as government agencies, to be able to help develop leaders of the future for the region. For the region. So, Jerry, when we first started mm -hmm. talking about this, my first thought was, how many people will apply? What will it be mm -hmm. like? And uh, talk me through that process, because clearly there was a lot of interest. Well, Robert has more, more details, but we got a, probably a list of uh, maybe 60, 70 candidates that self-nominated uh, themselves, and we went through a background check, and also we talked about each, each candidate. We mm -hmm. take this extremely seriously. This is a very important program for our region, and we came down with the top 25 candidates that we agreed as an executive committee, and uh, we reached out to them, and uh, that was our first inauguration class. Okay, so then I'm going to take it over yeah, here. Absolutely. <laughs> so the first class started when? Yes, so the first class started in January. Okay. Uh, and I think the last time that you and I spoke, we were talking about this vision, and now it's the actualization of that vision with the Executive Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Jerry mentioned, we have a fantastic cohort, uh, and they're uh, so involved and committed to the depth and breadth of this world-class academic opportunity. So there are 25 yes. enrolled right now. And does each one, I'm just going to come back up because you mentioned earlier, you yeah. said something about your mentee. Yeah. So does each program, each participant in the program have a mentor? Yeah, that's one, that's part of the program. Okay. Uh, I'm a mentor for Mike Thomas. And okay. He's my mentee. We've met a few times already. Every cohort has a mentor. You know, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching, you get mentorship, you mentor, you get peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, and also you get visibility and also mentoring with uh, other CEOs. And leaders in, in our community want to make a difference. And but the unique thing about it is that in addition to the mentorship, they also have a sponsor yes. at their organization. So ah. not only do they have a mentor from outside of their organization, but they also have someone within their organization as well to be able to support their efforts, professional development, who knows the culture of that particular organization and can help them navigate, if you would, through that. Now, just kind of talk me through that for just a second. So did the candidate come up? and then the corporation agreed to sponsor them? Or did the corporation come up and then find candidates within their operation, or was it both? It's a combination of both, and okay. Robert probably would like to go into details with that. Right, absolutely. So when we identified this pool of candidates mm -hmm. to build the inaugural mm -hmm. cohort, we were looking for individuals that had uh, the career aspirations uh, to advance in their career, and also that were on the career trajectory uh, and were identified by their peers and other executives within their corporations who then kind of uh, uh, recommended them to participate in the program. Okay. Now, he told me about his mentee. Tell me about yours. You don't have to use names if you don't want to. Uh, it's okay. interesting. My mentee I've known actually in the community uh, from a number of different relationships that we've wow. had from a previous, first from a personal relationship mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, previously mm -hmm. from an organization uh, for which she was working, a different organization uh, for which I was on a, a, the board. 
Uh, and uh, we have uh, then come to this particular situation where with the 23 uh, folks that are in the cohort, uh, we had the opportunity of working again together. So uh, it really is a very special relationship for us. I love mentee-mentor relationships. Yes. I really do. They important. are so rewarding on both sides. Absolutely. I just get excited listening to you yeah. talk about it. <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break. We're going to come back and tell you much more about where, where this is all headed. So don't go away when the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show continues.